James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, that's it, we're here. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. It is, what is the high for the, for today? 31. 31, and, and the low is in the 20s, Fahrenheit, right? No, tonight it's gonna to be eight. Eight degrees Fahrenheit? That's good. Well, we sure need our seven, seven lucky bells for the show for this week's progressive discussions. Everything you hear politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. Feel that conch energy. King Neptune is on hiatus. I'm getting his voicemail. Uh. Don't bother him when he's on vacation. He's been taking not as many vacations as Donald Trump, but he's been taking them. Okay. Now. Uh, well, I don't want to jump ahead with holidays. Uh, the next holiday would be St. Patrick's Day. And uh, uh, greetings to uh, general manager or perhaps even the owner, Patty of XavierGifts.com for the finest in Irish imports. I sent her uh, an email asking her when the uh, when will you be getting a restock of the longer Blackthorn Shillelagh walking sticks because I'm a tall guy and the ones that they have are for short to average height men or women. Okay, but women don't usually have them. So you figure, well, I'm six foot one, so I need the second or the longest one, which will be, th uh, which is, I believe, 37 inches to 39 inches. Those are the two longest ones. Because I have a tricky lower back. You know, I have an old lower back lumbar injury that goes away, but sneaks up on me and comes back occasionally um, you know just like you know some days your joints don't hurt and some days they hurt a lot anyway uh, Mr. Uh, um, Stephen of New Jersey that, that one of the gentlemen that had issues with uh, welfare, uh, uh, food stamps, Medicaid, et cetera, et cetera, Social Security disability. Of course, he had many of his issues um, fixed thanks to uh, acquiring the services of a Social Security uh, attorney. Okay, so he was happy to... Give he, him a plug, Bender and Bender. All right, Bender and Bender. He, all right, Bender and Bender helped Stephen out. He's very happy. Paying the uh, the fee, uh, it was supposed to be 25 percent, but Social Security refuses to give a lawyer any more than six thousand dollars. You know what? You know what's Where weird? Where the hell do these laws come from? You know what? But this is this is my problem. You got you got lawyers that specialize in different things, just like you have doctors that specialize mm -hmm. in different things. And then you have supposedly uh, progressive uh, uh, Democrats, I'm, I'm being sarcastic, uh, in Washington that they know what's going on. They know what's going on. And they're, supposed to, and they're supposed to protect you. Right. Now, do they, when, do they get ferocious like James B. Madonna? Oh, no. They call them my fellow colleagues. My Republican and Democrat colleagues, my Republican friends, and you know who I heard say that? Elizabeth Warren, Gooseneck herself, and Bernie Sanders. They, they, you don't have to make nice, nice. 
Does Jimmy Dore of the Aggressive Progressive make nice nice on his show? Hell no. Hell no. He 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 makes um he makes Saint uh, uh, Uker Iker look like the Easter Bunny of the Young Turks. Oh no, he he don't pull no punches. He's like George Carlin with profanity. God rest his soul. I was watching some some really good George Carlin videos. Two of them on political correctness. Funny as hell, but also true. God rest his soul, George Carlin. Uh, and Frank Zappa. Ahead of their time. Um, they, they knew what was going on. You know, political correct, correctness is a great stand-up comedy <coughs> routine because, you know, it's all based on the fact that you are really afraid of offending someone and therefore you walk on eggshells. To make a long story short. Anyway, getting back to Stephen. All right, he's happy. Then all of a sudden he finds out his food stamps went from $194 a month down to a microscopic amoeba, paramecium, E. coli, whatever you want to call it, $16 a month. What the hell is a big strapping man like Stephen who works out what is he going to do with $16 in a grocery store? You tell me. And this is what kills me. They think that people that live on a fixed income that are getting, let's say, $760 a month or $1,000 a month, oh, they think you're living high on a hog. Oh, yeah, they want to stop you from buying steaks. and No, but they, and think, you could, they think you can not only pay for your cost of yeah, living, cost yeah. of living, but they think you can go and buy your groceries with that money. You can't even pay rent. You can't even pay rent. You need rent subsidy. You need Section 8 with that. I Hold on. I think this pain in the ass wants to come in. Yeah, he's here. I, th I knew this was going to happen. Come on. Any any other devils? No, uh, no, no. Uh, what do you call the cat? They used to call the cats the devil's familiars. Yes. All right. Now shut up. All right. But it is cold out. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, what the hell are you going to do? That's like when your uncle gives you $2 and say, Hey, kid, don't spend it all in one place. Go buy yourself something. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's buy a candy bar. Yeah, $2. I had, a, I had a piece of shit. Oh, he's dead now. Hey, Steve. I had a piece of shit uncle that said um, to me, You know, if it wasn't for me, because I, I, my father he disappeared when I was young so he says if it wasn't for me tell your mother if it wasn't for me taking you out with my son or giving you a couple bucks here and there you know I don't have to do it I'm, I'm I do it to be nice but you know if it wasn't for me like he wanted me to kiss his ass but I, I was young if somebody said that to me now you see this fucking USDA grade A ham hock he would have no face they would call that my uncle, he had a flat nose, they would call him flat face, they would call him cast iron skillet face. And for those that, on Facebook that comment about my, my, my statements, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a very easy person to find up here in northeast, northeast New Jersey. If you want to duke it out, street fight style, come and see me. Because I have been in no mood this past week, no mood for shit. And I'm telling you right now, I, uh, I'm just saying, I'm an I'm, I'm easy person to find. So anyway, <laughs> poor Stephen has got this uh, piddly, uh, what the fuck is Steve meowing about? He's got all the food, he's got all the food and warmth in the world. Yeah, but he needs somebody to open it. Oh, he's like, he must be like, like, uh, like, like, uh, 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 like a member of the Trump family. He wants somebody to do it for him. Too fucking bad. He's got a poor. Anyway, yeah. So it's it's ludicrous that people on a fixed income are expected to buy groceries with that money, plus utility, pay for utilities, and so on and so forth. And another thing, Stephen went to the Walmart pharmacy, and the pharmacist says, "You better call uh, uh, Medicaid because you know even though." You, um, you most likely 
when you reapply, you'll still have something. He says the pro. He says what? What's going on? One day I, I run it through, and it pays for your prescriptions. It, it accepts it, including your um, Horizon Affordable Care Act. Horizon of New Jersey it still has a little more time left on it. All right. One day it goes through, it's accepted. The next day it's rejected. Then it accepts it again. Then it's rejected. Yeah. He says Medicaid called the pharmacist and says, you must be doing something wrong. You don't know how to put it through. He says, I've been a pharmacist for a long time. Yeah, I know how that. to run it through. The state, anything that has to do with the state, and yes, the federal government too, you all, I'm, I'm not saying... I, I don't think a person with that kind of a job can have that kind of a job and be that stupid. I think it's deliberate. I think you are the, the, they are, Reverend Bill, they are deliberately One third. low life, no good, evil, scum of the earth, pieces of shit. Because they know that like, one third of the people who are in the programs or want to apply will not because they want don't want to go through this shit in other words they like like billy billy morrow says they play the numbers game that's right just social security but it's underhanded what they're doing social security found out about that a long time ago and put it into policy you know like if you get a that's part like, like if you get a part-time job on the ticket to work and self-sufficiency program which reminds me of... Uh, well, once you get a job, you're no longer disabled. They, they understand the but, law. But that's the part they don't tell you in the letter. Of course not. They, you know what they tell you in the letter? That's the law. You know what it says in the letter? You don't have to worry about losing your, your fixed income, your yeah, check. Yeah. For the, maybe for the time you're, you know, learning or whatever. That's well, like, once you get the job... <laughs> That's like You're out, that's baby. like uh, the the Go the Gotham steel uh, uh, titanium and <laughs> ceramic skillet that, uh, that I bought from the infomercial uh, 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 after the ninety. I didn't realize there was a ninety day warranty on it, a sixty or ninety day warranty. Oh, it's guaranteed not to scratch your chip within the warranty amount of time. Yeah. Well, guess what? Well. It eventually chipped and scratched, went into the garbage. Ooh. And now I have been using my old-fashioned, trusty, cast-iron, uh, rectangular griddle, and I have no idea why I never used it before for, for everything, because it's fantastic. I love it. Oh, I know why I didn't use it for everything, because my sister kept on buying non-stick uh, T-fall type of skillets, you know. Women usually don't like cast iron because, you know, you got to lift it. You know, it's got weight to it. It's like picking up a little dumbbell, you know. Heaven forbid you should have to pick up a piece of cast iron. But anyway, it's cool. It's rectangular. It fits over two jets. It, I love it. It, it. The blacker it gets, the better it cooks. It's incredible. It, 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 it's, uh, it outperforms anything else. And you could oh you can leave it to other relatives when you croak. I mean, it's good uh -huh. for, if you take care of it. Oh, it it'll should, last. It should last for generations. Yes, it does. Maybe yeah. indefinitely if, if if the jabroni you leave it to takes care of it. Yeah, but uh, so that's the deal. They are scum of the earth. Nobody could be that stupid to hold a job like that, and that includes. A, hold on. That includes the state, social services, like in New Jersey, they suck. There's a lot of crony capitalism, corruption, cronyism, um, and uh, and that's that. They're, they're vile. Now, speaking and, of... And now, if Paul Ryan and Mr. Trump get their way, you, they're going to... Block grant the money to the states, and then the states are going to have to divide that up amongst their people and their needs, etc., etc. Well, expecting the states to take care of the the poor and the low-income people is like 
a conservative saying, um, go to your local churches for help. Oh, you, yeah. you don't need welfare. You don't need social services. Go to your relatives in your local church and ask them for help. Can't, it doesn't work. It won't work. Plain and simple, it will not work. That kind of funding is just not there. And uh, they, they want to leave it up to the states because they, they, are de they are obsessed with shrinking government down to nothing. Unless, except well, the, the part of government that helps people. Yeah, the part you see, Mr. Trump already raised the military fifty-four billion dollars because we're not strong enough here. Of course not. Well, the part that helps people is the part of government they have a problem with. Absolutely. The part, the part that helps corporations and the military-industrial complex—they're yeah. they're all for that. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, that's or giving themselves a raise uh, every single year. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. you're talking about the 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 vilest, most despicable parts of humanity, the areas of you of human nature. You're talking about selfishness, which greed greed is a part of selfishness, but it just it go I, there. I, there's certain degrees of it. Now you could be a middle class mom and pop store owner, and you could be. You could be known as a stingy skin flint. Really? You know, it's possible. But there's a slumlord. difference. Slumlord. Huh? Slumlord. Or, I'm going to get to that. Or a slumlord. Or, now, you could be a uh, CEO of a huge corporation, and you could be, you could be uh, uh, an evil, wicked piece of shit, stingy, greedy bastard. You, you, in other words, you, you can be way beyond the middle class, um, Main Street business owner or whatever, you know. So and then you can be part of the oligarchy. That you could be part of the top one percent, and you can be even more uh, wicked than the corporate CEO that happens to be running, you know, a, a famous company, a blue chip company. So there are different degrees of evil. There are different degrees of uh, of you know greed and whatever, and. Uh, and that's that. It's like the it's like the old monarchy. Mon it's like the old monarchies when you had feudalism and everything. You know, it's the same mentality. It's the same mentali mentality. Now, now Donald Trump's wife is it Malaria Trump? Melania. Melania made a ridiculous statement that says the poor they don't need the Affordable Care Act. Just educate them on how to use natural. Uh, uh, prevention uh, with herbs and nutrition, something of that nature. But he's still going to buy that stuff. But how is that going to assure that you're going to get you're going to get adequate health coverage when you need it? It ain't. It doesn't guarantee anything. Absolutely not. All right. I'm, let's say. Oh, I, I I can afford. Yeah, that's right. You got to pay out of pocket for supplements. Yeah. Let's say I got. Let's say I'm a, I'm a poor guy and I got supplements. Let's, let's say I'm lucky enough to buy it. Let's say I'm taking the best vitamin C gone, right? And then some somebody shakes my hand after they cough, shakes my hand, and I get sick from them. Yeah. What am I going to do, right? Unless, unless I, I, I could take a chance and, yeah, I could take 10, 10 grams of vitamin C and try to blow the cold out or whatever I have. But what if I have something more severe, more serious than just common cold or, yeah. or an influenza okay what if somebody with the the bird flu or the uh, or one of those exotic flus from the influenzas from Asia or something or you know all right or Ebola or whatever you still get, you got to go to the doctor you, gotta, you have to get medical attention what if somebody gets an eye infection they have to get medical attention broken bone she doesn't see exactly. the long she doesn't see the overall picture because it's not her problem you see that they they have theirs and they don't care if you have nothing and they know that they can dip into their money pot and pay for anything they need it it's very easy when you have it yes to to and that's uh, the capitalist system system yes sir this is all you gotta have before you can get the 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 whole concept of the whole concept of 
capitalism where you have to pay out of pocket for every fucking thing imaginable really, really sucks unless you're part of the rich and, and, you're, and you're not a nice person. Then capitalism is great for you. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're middle class or poor, capitalism never worked and never will work. Uh, and another thing I have to salute about, speaking of uh, democratic socialism, I have to salute Scandinavia, Northern Europe, including Iceland, Aha. which was a uh, colony of uh, the Denmark, I believe. The Vikings! Yes. They, not only do they take care of their people quite well, but they also take care of their uh, their uh, high high powered criminals, their their corruption quite well too, because they throw your ass in prison. Yeah, some people from the banks after the financial meltdown went to jail. Yeah. In Iceland. Who on Wall Street went to prison. None. None. You know, they'll yeah, well, well justice is served in Scandinavia. Yeah. You know, uh 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 well when when Hillary Clinton said during the debate to Bernie Sanders, well, we're not Sweden. I was waiting for Bernie to make a comeback, which he didn't do. Yes, Hillary, I know. We're definitely not Sweden. <laughs> Sweden cares about its people. Yeah. That would have been the perfect comeback. Yeah. He didn't do it because he's got to be nice to his Democratic colleagues. See, this is the part of this is the part of ultra liberalism. The other trouble is they gotta be nice to their Republican colleagues. That's even worse. Uh -huh. This is the problem with politically correct ultra liberalism or neo. They like to say neo now. Neo liberalism is that they're really afraid to offend somebody. You know, they're like, you know, they're please be my friend. Can't, what was that old the old stupid rock song from the seventies? Can't we be friends? Can't we? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we? Fuck that! What are we? Hey, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. When Judge Judy or any of those judges on TV, when that mallet comes down, the decision is made. Whether you like them, love them, hate them, you know, have a thing for them, it doesn't matter. You gotta make a decision. Boom, the gavel comes down. Boom. That's what this reminds me of too. It's like it's like my gavel. But that's true. You, well, you gotta make a decision. And the decision is kind of like old man Leonard Nimoy. Wow. God rest his soul. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. However, the big problem is that our government works on compromise. Why? Or it doesn't work at all. What about what about like in uh, European and and Asian parliaments when they kick the shit out of each other? And yeah, but you, uh, oh, I love seeing the, that. The the party that has the most people in it, they rule, and then to absolutely rule. They need a coalition with some other parties. And that's how it's done. So, Same thing here. In other words, if the Republicans yeah. own the House and they own the Senate, you're not going to get anything done yeah. without their help. So ultimately, ultimately, you could you could rumble and get into all the boxing matches you want. The voting is the voting. Ultimately, the votes will take place. And whoever's outvoted, that's it. that's it. So then if you want to get into power, you've got to try to get your people into power. Did you know the next election? Now, did you know that not only not only the election year of November <coughs> for uh, November 2014, but the election year of November uh, 2016, uh, um, uh, okay. you know how many people did not vote at all in both yeah. in both a lot nobody learned their lesson from two, uh, November 2014 an, an enormous amount of you despicable Americans did not 
the vote. Last, the last counting I heard was that Trump got 60 million votes yeah. and uh, Hillary got 62.8. Well, I saw the pie chart. Oh, it is the percentage yeah. of people that didn't either that had apathy again voter apathy. Right. So that combined is 163.8 million people. But there are a hell of a lot more people registered than that. So they didn't vote. They didn't bother to vote, but they sure love to go on social media and show everyone how brilliant they are with their comments. In fact, they had some. Um, they interviewed some people that were at the tr uh, Trump rallies against him, and occasionally they would ask one, that, "Well, did you vote for uh, anybody?" And they said, "No, I didn't vote." Well, what the fuck? <laughs> if you don't listen, an old Jewish man told me, James, James, if you don't vote, if you if you don't vote, you have no right to complain. I mean, not me per se. He was using. He was talking to you. another person. You have no right to complain, and he was absolutely right. Absolutely. That's right. Now, yeah. speaking of Slumlord, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Mr. Um, Paul Anthony Amantia, mm -hmm. accomplished uh, uh, guitarist and tenants rights activist who has organizations web pages about uh, tenant the tenant versus landlord issues where, where you have a scumbag a piece of shit uh, uh, slumlord mentality uh, landlord and you have issues yes yes there are laws there are laws that protect tenants but the big but is Mr. Paul um, Anthony uh, Mantia, who did a show with me last night live on YouTube, live stream too. He, um, like he explained, he's a Yankee boy living in the Jacksonville, Southern Cracker, Northern Florida, Jacksonville, Florida area, where the the wealthy landlord has a lot of connections, knows everybody, and nobody did a damn thing to help. Paul Anthony Mantia and his, and his girlfriend had to live in an apartment that was extremely unsafe for any tenant to live in. Whether it be the electrical <laughs> wiring, whether it be leak, leaky, whatever, leaky uh, holes in the wall, leaky roof. Cockroaches. It was it was it had violations after violations up the, after violations it, so it, it, and guess what the the uh, the the legal system the judicial system in Jacksonville Florida did nothing because the man is well connected and very well known and you know and it's and they called him a Yankee boy Yankee boy so oh so I kind of figured it's you know it's it's uh, northern Florida well, WPIX WP Channel 11 here on TV. Help me, Howard. Help me, Howard, and uh, help me, Monica. Well, he came up. He's from Bron He's from the Bronx, Paul. Yes. yes. He says they would ne that would never fly in New York City. You kidding me? That would they wouldn't even they w action would would have been taken so quickly. Well, Justice yeah. would have would have been Some, delivered so time. swiftly. But it, the trouble is you have to get people like that to go on your side to help you sometimes when you shouldn't have to do yeah. that. And remember Arnold Diaz? He's another good, yeah, good too, guy. Yes, yes. Hey, help me Howard will be banging on your door saying, Hey, why haven't you done this, that, and the other thing? How come you're not answering the door? I'm telling you. But not just that. A great mayor like um, Bill de Blasio, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, that, that shit don't fly in in, in, in Yankee territory, in, in in major cities up north, especially New York City. Are you kidding me? That uh, issues with slumlords. I mean, there are slumlords in New York City. Don't get me wrong. You know, Donald Trump's father was one of them. Yeah. You know, but but uh, they, what they did was they turned the blind eye to the law, and the law states that if you're a tenant uh, and you're expected to pay rent. Mm -hmm. You you have to live in a safe 
clean, decent uh, uh, home. There are you, certain things yeah. that they must be given. That's correct. Right. Now, this guy wanted to get paid rent, and he didn't want to provide a safe right. haven for Paul Anthony uh, Amantia and his girlfriend. He didn't want to provide that. He, he, he wanted his cake and eat it. Uh, he was yeah. a rich piece of shit. Oh, they don't like money going out. Sounds like they a, don't like he it. Sounds like he sounds like a typical corporate American CEO. They don't like money going out. He sounds like uh, like maybe a, a Mitch McConnell or a Paul Ryan or any of those southern any of those southern conservatives who like to stuff their pocket, that but don't want to help anybody uh, but their own kind. And of course, in the long run, none of that none of those people understand that when you help the down person downtrodden yeah the down person you are helping the economy well there's more you spending see? going there on. you go and with more spending there's more investment in people creating businesses well yeah you, you have to, to think get a little bitter that scratch man scratch yeah you have to think long you have to have the ability to think long term exactly and you have to have the, well first you have to have the the ability to think period <laughs> then you think you look at the overall picture then you think long term which conservatives don't do but no. i just want to say thank you and greetings to uh um, uh, uh, tennis rights activist Paul Anthony Mantia and, and, and greetings to, to his girlfriend too to both these and uh, thank you for the show um, last night and uh, it's yes it is on YouTube and yes uh, names were definitely mentioned ah. and attorneys ha are, ca are starting to contact Paul Anthony Mantia but the, you know, you, you, is it? Let me ask you a question. Is the term kangaroo court in the dictionary? It should be. Now, a kangaroo court is 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 a is an old Wild West term for a rig system, right? Yeah. The red dictionary, right there. I didn't bring my reading glasses. Oh well. Wow. I'll have to. I'll have to go to. When the, I finish reading, you can drop it off yeah, here, and I take I'll it have there. to go to the Merriam-Webster uh, online uh, dictionary. Who the hell's Merriam? Is that his, his wife? name? Merriam. It's his, his name. His first name is Merriam. Yeah. What, what was wrong with his parents naming him Merriam? Well, what about uh, uh, Johnny Cash naming his son Sue? How do you do? He really did that? That's his song, one of his songs. But he's really Sue? No, he ain't his real kid, it's his song. Hey, you have a you have a real man's name. William. William. I have a man's name. James. Yeah. Jay, James. He, James. Johnny Cash said he named him that because William is bald. That will James teach him that yes. will teach him to fight for his what he wants and etc in life yeah but the poor kid it's, <laughs> it's kind of cruel you know I mean I mean uh, what about uh, uh, a smart man like Frank Zappa his his, his daughter was moon unit moon unit there and you and do and his son was Dweezil Zappa well anybody with the name of Dweezil come on you're oh, not doing him God. any favors <laughs> <laughs> all right you know what let us sink our teeth into these readings because we were very long-winded. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be ah, friends? Let me see what I got here. Uh, well, let's see if I have enough It is cold in a witch's titty outside. Yes, there. it is. Okay. Two members of Congress with the power under a 1924 law to demand copies of President Donald Trump's tax returns from the Treasury Department say they won't do that because it would abuse their authority and endanger citizen privacy. In other words, they cut them a break, didn't they? It said they had the power to do it. The rejection came in a joint letter from Senator Orrin Hatch, Republican of Utah. Was he a chicken farmer at one time? Orrin Hatch? Hatch? Hold on a second. 
These are the levity bells. Chairman of the Senate Finance Committee and Representative Kevin Brady of Texas. Mm -hmm. Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. The two Republicans scum were responsible Oh, responding to a request sent Wednesday by Democratic Representative Bill Pascrell of New Jersey. Hey, Bill Pascrell! He's our, he's our, uh, is he a senator or a congressman? Congress. Congressman of, of our district, Bill yeah. Pascrell. Senators Dab, Debbie Stabenow of Michigan and Ron Wyden of Oregon. Stabenow, And huh? other members of the Finance Committee. Yikes. The proposed use of the committee's statutory authority sets forth a dangerous precedent that could allow Congress to improperly access the tax returns of any American, regardless of whether or not the individual authorized their disclosures. Hatch and Brady wrote in the letter, Trump is the least private citizen in our country. Pascrell said Thursday, and Hatch and Brady are dead wrong. Pascrell, a member of the Ways and Means Committee, said he approached Brady in early February about obtaining Ty Trump's tax returns. He said he wanted to find out if the president's failure to completely divest himself from his business empire leaves him with conflicts of interest including potential violations of the clause in the Constitution that prohibits federal officials from receiving gifts or other emoluments or things of value from foreign governments. Uh, you mean getting, getting your palms greased? That's correct. The bribe, taking the bribe. Brady rejected Pascrell's request privately, then publicly in a committee hearing. You know, I never heard Bill Pascrell give a speech uh, in, in Washington. Uh, I've met him, I, I've chatted with him in a pub, uh -huh. in, in the sport, uh, Pub 46 in Clifton, New Jersey, but I've never seen him in action. On Monday, Pascrell used a procedure known as a privileged resolution. to try to force the issue on the House floor and was voted down in a largely party-line vote. Two Republicans who simply voted present rather than no on that resolution are joining Pascrell in a letter that he said he will send Thursday to Hatch and has been signed by 162 House members. A 1924 law, Section 6103 of the Internal Revenue Code, allows the Chairman of the Finance Committee, Ways and Means Committee, and Joint Committee on Taxation, made up of members of Finance and Ways and Means, request on financial tax information that can be reviewed by the committees in private. The committees then could vote to make the information available to the full Congress and making it public. These authorities have typically only been used to investigate specific allegations of misconduct by federal officials and as necessary for the committees to carry out their legislative responsibilities and conduct oversight of the executive branch. To date, we have not seen or received any specific allegations of tax-related misconduct by federal officials or abuses of taxpayer rights that would lead us to invoke it. Pascrell responded, Respectfully, the chairman in this letter 
are dead wrong. Using this authority in this manner is not unprecedented. We did it in 1974 with President Nixon's tax returns. They further say there have been no allegations of tax misconduct against Trump. But we know the IRS fined Trump and the Trump Foundation for violating self-dealing rules. So the Republicans protect him. Okay? Yeah. Kangaroo court. Yeah. Kangaroo court. Phony capitalism. Rigged system continues because they got the votes. They have the votes. And uh, the Democrats can uh, jump up and down, scream and yell all they want. But uh, unless you have the votes, That's right. I mean, uh, I just want to remind everyone that not not next year, but I think the year after, uh, many, many congressional and senatorial seats are supposedly up for re-election. Yes. Now, the, what does that mean? Does that mean that, that, does that mean that, that all of the inbred, redneck, right-wing, evangelical pieces of shit will somehow see the light and grow brain cells and 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 not and, and elect the right people even though they're living in squalor squalor no no which they are living in squalor like uh what is that wolf county kentucky and enjoying the uh obamacare but then the i believe it's the ex-governor the ex-governor is saying that Obamacare does not work, never worked in uh, Kentucky. Oh, really? Yeah. What does work in Kentucky? Death? Obamacare. Right now. Well, Death used to. You, uh, you, uh, those of you that are watching this show will see the, a funny cartoon of uh, Donald Trump um, in a, paying a visit to someone in a hospital and, and, and covering his face with a blanket saying, don't worry, you're covered. Be. Well, you know, don't worry. You're covered. I got you. You know what I mean? You're covered. Yeah, you're covered. You're going to the morgue. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be tied, uh, toe tag. Yeah. Yeah. Toe All right. Tag, We're going to break for lunch. We have uh, <coughs> How to Defeat a Conservative um, Bible Verses. You can hit the pause button, read and learn, followed by promo. And then we'll be back. Yeah.
Polish P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. As I was saying before we went to break, to lunch, um, uh, something was about to uh, piss me off and um, I just decided not to say anything. In case you're wondering why I did not finish my sentence. Somebody was staring down my co-host and mentor, uh, uh, tapping her fingers, and there's one thing I, it drives me crazy, and women like to do that, is when they want, they want, they want attention, they want to get their way, and they want, to, they want you to kowtow to them, they will, they will stare and tap their fingers. And when they do that, I like to take my fucking black thorn shillelagh and smash their. F what, what are the bones in the hand? The tarsal bones? 
Phalanges. 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 Oh, that's the tarsals. The the carpal. No, oh, carpals are up here somewhere in the wrist, right? No, the tarsal. The ulna tarsal. is the ulna. The wrist, the ulna. Yeah. Carpal. Right. Ulna. Yeah. The humerus would be the entire uh, upper arm bone. The humerus. Funny bone. Yeah, I don't know why it's humerus. Anyway. I don't want to digress. All right, let us return to the show. Are there any, um, well, I know March 17th is St. Patrick's Day, but we still have a little time before that happens, right? So there's really nothing going on this coming week as as far as holidays go, right? When is it the 12th or the 17th? I think it's March 17th. March 17th. It's something on the 12th. I don't know what it says. Huh. Well, there's no national holidays coming up this week. It's you know, red. Hold on. I it's swear red. to God, you you say anything about me getting up during the show off my seat, and I'm going to go ballistic. Remember, Reverend Bill's telling me to check it out. Well, I swear to Christ, you say anything, I'm going to curse you out. Daylight. Oh, I got up for daylight savings time. Yeah, I got to change. You know what? I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, this subject came up. I, I think daylight savings time is stupid. It is. Leave it alone. And, you know, not every state recognizes. No, they don't. A couple states, I think Arizona and... They're going to pull out. Or have to. Pull out? That's like, uh, what do you call that? Coitus interruptus? Pull out? Daylight saving time oh. interrupted. Leave, leave it alone. So what if... Uh, at 5 a.m. in the winter, it's it's pitch black out. Well, they, they got to, again, they got to coddle these American kids. Well, that's what it was. Poor babies have to get up for school in the dark. Yeah. What about the kids in Sc that live in the Arctic Circle in Scandinavia? Well, they have all, six months of dark. Six months of dark. Get the kids used to the dark. Get the kids used to things. Baby the crap out of them, like these crossing guards over here. They're crossing everybody, adults, kids that are in their, their mid-twenties, adult people. I don't mind if it's a senior citizen or, or a disabled person, but for, but for God's sakes, able-bodied adult people need a crossing guard and I gotta stop my car? That's probably the part that bothers me. I gotta stop my car. Uh, a thousand times. With some moron, should know perfectly well how to cross the street during during uh, when school school uh, season. All right, go ahead. Change of pace. Tomato pace. Three decades after being all but wiped out, uh -oh. the bald eagle population continues to grow in New Jersey. And it come back with a record 172 couples and 216 chicks spotted last year. You know what? I gotta salute the American bald eagle. I don't know how, I don't know how such a beautiful bird and such a symbolic bird was allowed to become in, endangered I really don't know. I don't understand this. It's probably due to pollution. I really don't know. But it, it used to be in danger. You know, alligators used to be in danger. Now there's way too many. Hey, the swamp people will take care of that. Oh, ah. that, oh that guy's so funny. I love the, the father. You know, he's got that Cajun accent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Gators are friggin' huge as hell with a full grown. Oh. Over a thousand pounds, I think. And, and and I think their bite was measured at over 25,000, uh, I'm sorry, no, two, 2,500 pounds per square inch on the oh. bite. 2,500 pounds per square inch. The news was celebrated by birders and state environmental officials. What about the Audubon Society? Them too, right? Who say the resurgence of bald eagles is a significant bellwether of the Garden State's recovering environment. 
An eagle's nest was even found recently in Patterson, making it the most urban area on New Jersey for a pair of eagles to settle in. Don Torino, president of the Bergen County Audubon Society. It's a success story beyond belief. This did not happen overnight. It was because people fought for this decades ago. After almost being wiped out by the pesticide DDT. Aha! Now you know why. The American bald eagle has experienced a resurgence in New Jersey and the rest of the nation. From a single nesting pair in the Garden State in 1982, the numbers increased to 59 eagle pairs ten years ago. By 2011 there were 113. In 2015 there were 161. Most of the 11 new pairs discovered last year by state workers partnering with a non-profit group were in southern New Jersey. Eagles have made homes everywhere from the Palisades to the Oradell Reservoir to the highlands of Monacue. What amazes me uh, is how all those wild parrots uh, survived, there, survived yeah. and, 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 and they, they didn't migrate wild. south. They, I'm talking about parrots that didn't like their owners. They were probably assholes or neglect of, you know, and, and then they flew, they flew to coop like the Bernie bird did <laughs> during, during the primaries. Anyway, they flew to Coop and they all found each other and they, and they survived the winter. Now my hunch is that there is heat coming out of those transformers up on the telephone poles. Absolutely. And they huddle together because birds amazingly are warm-blooded even though they hatch from eggs. They huddle, huddle together in between their body heat and the transformers. But then there remains the question, what do they eat? About 50 eagles were spotted last month around a Ridgefield Park nest next to Overpeck Creek, said Gil Hawkins of Leonia, who has led an effort to restore nearby dumping grounds to a nature preserve. That nest belongs to Al and Alice, a pair of eagles that have become an attraction for, the, for birders across the region. Well, I'm very happy uh, when um, well, any endangered animal of beauty <clears throat> uh, makes a comeback. I know the peregrine falcon uh, made a, a huge comeback, the, uh, the, the, the world's fastest living creature. The peregrine falcon was endangered a long time ago and and you know people help out. Um, they put um, birdhouses on top of skyscrapers which are like man-made cliffs, cliffs for falcons. Um, you know what I like to do? Are you familiar with the purple martin bird? It's a it's a it's a little purple bird that eats eats a hell of a lot of mosquitoes at uh, when the, when the sun starts to dip. We welcome him. Okay, but the purple martin they sell these purple martin condominiums at a very high <coughs> price. And but purple martins will also go into a particular squash known as a birdhouse gourd. Uh -huh. It is a, a bulbous, has a bulbous bottom, but it's it's bulbous to the point where what you do is you take it when it's fresh and you 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 just carve 
not not a deep hole but you know you just you you make the beginnings of a hole and you just put it somewhere it dries out and now you have the the hole for the purple martin and and it's total it's completely hollow and it has a stem for you to tie some kind of a rope to to hang it up mm -hmm. and, and you got yourself a birdhouse mm -hmm. birdhouse gourds so for you bird lovers and you have a you know and you like gardening or even if you don't like gardening learn to like it hey. and, and get some birdhouse gourd seeds and grow the damn birdhouses so you don't have to pay through the nose to the rip-off American retail industry for birdhouses can you dig that suckers you just got a, a wonderful consumer tip from yours truly James P Madonna how much <coughs> Is an old dried out piece of mold worth? Well, if it's an old dried out piece of mold on some brie cheese, which I happen to love, I will eat it. Apparently, more than $14,600 if it was created by the doctor who discovered penicillin. There you go. The nearly 90 year old swatch of mold has a rather extraordinary history. It came from the laboratory of Dr. Alexander Fleming. That's right. Whose revolutionary discovery brought the world its first antibiotic. Unfortunately, he used to cough up a lot of that disgusting yellow liquid from his lungs. But, you know, Fleming, Alexander Fleming. You know, uh, what do they call sputum? Credited with saving millions of lives worldwide. Mucus. <clears throat> the patchy bit of mold from his niece's collection was auctioned Wednesday in London for $14,617. <laughs> the buyer uh -oh. was not identified. The you mold know? is preserved in a round glass case and features an inscription by Fleming on the back. You know, bread mold is, I uh, hear, the same mold that's used to make a, a, to, a, a tofu, a, um, a, a soybean product from um, uh, Indonesia and, uh, um, called uh, tempeh. I think it's Indonesian and Malaysia. It, it is a fermented um, a soybean product. <coughs> uh, that, that they just let it get moldy. That that's the same kind of mold. Fleming described it as the mold that first made penicillin. That, however, may be a stretch. The Scottish-born doctor likely made at least dozens of mm. such mold mementos derived from his original sample of the fungus. Fleming sent these samples out to dignitaries and to people in the scientific world, almost as a kind of holy relic. He noted, Dr. Matthew Haley did, that other bits of mold were given to Pope Pius XII, Winston Churchill, and Marlena Dietrich. Pope Pius. Pius. Yeah, okay. Perhaps in a discoverer, excuse me, perhaps in an effort to cement Fleming's legacy as the discoverer of penicillin in 1928. Before the discovery, infections like pneumonia, rheumatic fever, were near death sentences. When it first became available, penicillin was called a miracle drug said Kevin Brown, archivist at the Alexander Fleming Laboratory Museum. Its discovery began a new life-saving era in medicine. In some ways, the discovery was accidental. Fleming found mold growing in an experiment when he returned to his lab after a stay at his country house. One Petri dish 
was full of bacteria, except for an area where mold was growing. Wow. He later realized the mold, a rare strain of penicillin, was killing the bacteria around it. Fleming noticed something that other people would have missed and saw the potential of penicillin to treat patients. Scientists at Oxford University further developed penicillin and production was ramped up so that enough of the antibiotic would be available for the Allied invasion on D-Day in 1944. Fleming and Oxford scientists Ernest Boris Chain and Howard Walter Florey were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in medicine in 1945. Brown noted that not everybody was thrilled to receive the preserved mold medallions and that some got multiple copies including Queen Elizabeth's husband Prince Philip. Every time he met Fleming he got another one of these things. Brown Say. Mm. I know, I know uh, uh, rat poison is Coumadin and I love to shove it down the throats of some people I know. Yeah. Coumadin, the blood thinner Coumadin, right? Yes, Coumadin. Uh... I guess it would have to be a certain amount. Oh, by the way, the uh, the little the little uh, springtime ants do not care apparently of the uh, the plunge in temperature because they're starting to make their appearance. Oh no, not already. The little tiny teeny tiny black the black ants. But you were right. The uh, the the ant bait does not work on cardboard. It's got to be on That's so clean. plastic. Right, right. You know, the, the ant bait that they, they take back to the queen, the colony, and then, it, and then they all get killed as it. Killed as it. Yeah. President Trump okay. boasted on Tuesday night about military cost savings and corporate job expansion oh boy. that actually took root under his predecessor and gave a one-sided account of the costs and benefits to the economy from immigration. You gotta keep ignoring the, the upside. You gotta keep the fucking corporate jobs in the United States. Otherwise they don't mean anything to the United States, to Americans. It's meaningless. Just like with uh, immigrants from Mexico. Why are you blaming the poor Mexicans trying to feed their, their family, uh, take care of their kids and survive. Go after the American companies that are hiring illegal immigrants so they get cheap labor. Oh no, they don't go after them. I just had to say that. Continue. Well, here are a few of the Trump, shall we say, lies? Oh, there are plenty of them. Or whatever. According to the National Academy of Sciences, our current immigration system costs America's taxpayers many billions of dollars a year. That's what Trump said. It's a fact. That's not exactly what that report says. It says immigrants contribute to government finances by paying taxes and add expenditures by consuming public services. The report found that while first-generation immigrants 
are more expensive to governments from their native-born counterparts, primarily at the state and local level, immigrants' children are among the strongest economic and fiscal contributors in the population. Really? The report found that the long-run fiscal impact of immigrants and their children would probably be seen as more positive if their role in sustaining labor force growth and contributing to innovation and entrepreneurial activity were taken into account. Trumpy said, we have saved the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars by bringing down the price of the F-35 jet fighter. The fact. You know what? Um, there's, there, 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 there's really plenty of wasteful blow in the military. Uh, you know, he will save more money than he thinks if he if he sincerely wanted to cut out the waste. More money than he can ever imagine. He will save. The cost savings he persists in bragging about were secured in full or large part before he became president. The head of the Air Force program announced significant price reductions in the contract for the Lockheed F-35 fighter jet December 19th. I remember watching the documentary about uh, Lockheed versus Boeing for the government contract. They were competing. They wanted, they wanted a more um, they wanted uh, a, a lower cost, fixed wing aircraft. And it was Boeing versus Lockheed, and Lockheed won the government contract. So I guess maybe this is the, you think this might be the fiasco plane? That was a problem. Yes, that was, yes, this is that plane. It's fixed wing, yeah. But the cost reductions were in before he became president. Yeah. He became president on January 20th. The costs for reductions were in by December 19th. So he took the credit. But it wasn't him who did it. Oh, he's such a, you know, he just lines up those comedians with material. He, he is, he is an ego beyond ego. After Trump had tweeted of about the cost, but weeks before he met the company CEO about it, of course he tweeted. Pentagon managers took action <laughs> even before the election to save money on the contract. Richard Albolafia, an analyst with the aerospace consulting firm. Teal Group said, there is no evidence of any additional cost savings as a result of Trump's actions. Trump also said, since my election, Ford, Fiat Chrysler, General Motors, Sprint, SoftBank, Lockheed, Intel, Walmart, and many others have announced they will invest billions of dollars in the United States and will create tens of thousands of new American jobs. The facts. 
It's unlikely Trump is the sole or even primary reason for the expected hiring he cites. Many of the announcements reflect corporate decisions that predate his election. In the case of Intel, construction of the Chandler, Arizona factory referred to by Trump actually began during Barack Obama's presidency. The project was delayed by insufficient demand for Intel's high-powered computer chips. But the company now expects to finish the factory within four years because it anticipates business growth. More important, even as some companies create jobs, others are laying off workers. This measure of whether more jobs are actually being created is the monthly employment report issued by the Labor Department, which nets out those gains and losses. Trump said his budget plan will offer one of the largest increases in national defense spending in American history. Uh -huh. In fact, three times in recent years, Congress raised defense budgets by larger percentages than 54 billion or 10 percent, the increase that Trump proposed. The base defense budget grew by 41 per billion, or 14.3 percent, in 2002, by 37 billion or 11.3 percent in 2003 and by 47 billion or 10.9% in 2008. Trump said, we will provide massive tax relief for the middle plan. Yeah, try not to speak so softly because it's noisy. I carry a big stick. I, what you just said, I heard you, but because that, of the, that, yeah. that, that, that. I barely heard you. Actually. Microphone is here. Well, I hope to God that it turns out like you say. Well, we've never had any trouble in the past. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, getting back where you ended off. Well, you probably didn't. End Trump off. has provided little detail on how this would happen. Independent analysis of his campaign's tax proposals found that most of the benefits would flow to the wealthiest of them. Of course, wealthiest of families. Uh, the richest 1% would see an average tax cut of nearly $215,000. Amen. They do what they do because they can. Because no one is held accountable by we the people. While the middle one-fifth of oh. it a cut of just $1,010. Trump said, 94 million Americans are out of the labor force. Uh, well, there's also a percentage that have just simply given up or they're living in tents somewhere. Or, in other words, there's the government pro projection of what the unemployed is. And then there's the real amount of how many people that are destitute. Including the homeless. Yes, yes, yes. The homeless. They're still human beings. They sh they're still part of the uh, 
of those that are that are unemployed? Well, fact. That's true. Yeah. But for the vast majority of them, it's because they choose to be. Okay. We've got so many. We've got so much opportunity in the United States now. Sure. Oh yeah, the economy is great. The job market is great. That 94 million figure includes everyone age 16 and older who doesn't have a job, isn't looking for one. So it includes retirees. Well, that includes uh, newborn babies, right? Parents who are staying home to raise children. You're a moacher. And high school and college students. You're still in the womb? Oh, no, we'll take care of you. We care about you a lot. Oh. The doctor slapped you on the ass? You're born already? Oh, oh no, you're a freeloader. You're a moocher. Get out of here. Get out of here, you little, you little uh, uh, newborn bum. <laughs> Get a jab. Get a jab. There you go. <laughs> it's sad, but this is how Republicans think. Conservatives, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Melania take, says take vitamins, don't, to, to, don't worry about Affordable Care Act, take vitamins. Oh, oh gosh. Maybe they own some sort of uh, interest in a vitamin company. Maybe, maybe that's why Donald Trump's hair is orange. Maybe there's an awful lot of beta carotene going into that man. Of all the laughable statements Donald Trump makes, one of the most ridiculous is he inherited a mess. He inherited a mess? What about what, what Barack Obama inherited? <laughs> that <laughs> when President Obama took over, this country was in a dire situation. We were losing thousands of jobs monthly and unemployment was at 10% or higher. And the deficit was uh, astronomical. Banks, investment organizations, you gotta be careful now because when Trump talks about the, the debt, he talks about the, uh, what is it, up to 20 trillion now? The national debt. He doesn't talk about the deficit, which Obama brought down by two thirds. Well, nobody from the Republican Party is going to give Barack Obama credit for any damn thing. No, of course not. But, yeah. but uh, you know, the 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 twenty trillion dollars. I mean, who do we owe that to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not Obama's fault for that. That's that's the fault of the Republicans who will not pay for certain things that come into the budget. Right. Like for for instance, when they were fighting years ago uh, over uh, not not uh, extending our credit and blah 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 blah. Well, what happens was every year, whether you do something, let's just take uh, let's take for instance, let's take SNAP food stamps. Okay. Every year, whether you do something or don't do something, the price of that program is going to rise mm -hmm. by a percentage point, two or three, whatever. Right. If you don't pay that, that year, you're going to get the 3%. Next year, you don't pay it, you get another 3%. Now you're down 6%. That's what they do. They don't pay for programs that they have vote for. <clears throat> okay. Regarding journalists are not the enemy of the people. Today it seems we get as much poor journalism as good journalism. Even on the front page. As an example, the column cites Russian and French murderers a past president who went rogue with a plumber's unit designed to stop leaks and a, a communist Chinese leader all of whom did terrible things. 
Also, our current president is suggested as being on the same level as those bad hombres. While not mentioning one act he did to harm us. This is an inaccurate parallel. If journalists and the media are called out for factual reasons, then they need to take real stock of themselves. The press is not voted in. The president is. And his credentials are reviewed by the citizenry every four years. There's a reason approval ratings of the media are low. It would be nobler for the author to write an article titled, Unbiased Journalists Are Not the Enemy of the People, rather than stretching a comparison to include some of the worst people in history. And regarding Trump, blast! unnamed sources. The headline soft pedals the story that follows. The hypocrisy of the Trump White House will well reported in the story itself calls for a headline such as White House demands media rely on officials anonymous statements. Mm -hmm. This administration ignores its own contradictory statements, repeats falsehoods, even when confronted with contrary evidence, and appears to believe okay. it has no obligation to speak truthfully and to the public. Freedom of the press is essential in a democracy. The record, our local newspaper, needs to use every headline to emphasize Trump's threats to free speech. Yeah. Oh well. Oh. It's about that time. We got like uh, one yeah. more for the road. Uh, At least one more for the road. Uh, change of pace. Yeah. yeah, because all the yeah. Trump readings are are uh, both equally humorous and equally upsetting. Aha! Uh -huh. And they they really you know they're very they're kind of redundant because. There's nothing positive about having Republicans control the country, unless you're stingy, greedy, and rich. I am a 20-year-old woman. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. Who has been in a two-year relationship with a guy who has been my good friend for seven years. Last summer, we were apart for three months. When I moved across the country for an internship, things were rough. I was very lonely. And I had a drunken one-night stand. Well, it's a known fact that alcohol is the best aphrodisiac for a woman. Uh, uh, even more so than kissing her up and down her neck. I didn't care about the person. I was just lonely. No, you were drunk. <laughs> I feel so guilty. You were you were in lust momentarily. I never told my boyfriend about my infidelity. If I didn't tell him, he would most likely never find out. They're they're monogamous, I guess. It's uh, not infidelity unless you're you're monogamous. They're not married. Yeah, well, it's... Yeah, yeah, you can't call it infidelity if, uh, you know... Some people that are dating actually delusionally act like they're a married couple. They're a married couple. Uh, I know a couple females like that, you know. They, they think they're, oh, he's my guy. Hey, what, is it? what is this possession? You're not married to him. 
I hate that I did something that would hurt him. I was a friend through his years in foster care and the incarceration of both of his parents. I have been the shoulder to cry on and his support system. I betrayed the most important person in my life and I failed him miserably. I have seen people cause him pain and I don't want to be the cause of more. I want to be with this man for the rest of my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to be with him for the rest of your life. But I also accept that it would be entirely my fault. Well, what does he want to be with you for the rest of his life? If I told him and he left. <clears throat> I feel a lot of guilt and shame. But the thought of his face after I tell him makes me feel like my heart is being ripped out of my chest. Oh, this, oh, this violin feels like a cello. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Amy answers. Amy has a lot of tolerance with people. I couldn't, I couldn't do this. <sighs> you are 20 years old. When he is old and she's and she's she's holy shit. She's probably ugly as hell. First of all, if illegal, drinking leads to such regrettable behavior, then you should not do it. Ask yourself, if your boyfriend did the exact same thing that you did. A one-night stand. Would you want to know about it? Hey, uh, millennials, twenty-something people get loaded every weekend. For God's sakes, and and she makes it sound like she committed murder or something. Does this episode speak to some sort of deep-seated problem or need that you have? Or was it a stupid mistake made by a young person that will never be repeated? The hormones were flying around. If so was the boots. If it is a former, you should realize that you are not quite ready for being in a long-term, exclusive, committed relationship. Oh, she should be committed, all right. She's only 20. She has her whole life ahead of her. If it was the latter, so to see, then you should keep this to yourself. This might be one of those times when you should carry out your own guilt privately rather than relieve it by unloading onto your boyfriend and burdening him with the dilemma of what to do about your behavior. Carrying this burden and choosing to wise up and behave differently is the consequence of this episode. If you find that your guilt over this continues to interfere with your relationship, then you should tell your boyfriend. Do not expect him to appreciate your choice. Applaud your unburdening or forgive you right away one risk of having an outside sexual experience, even a one-night stand, is contracting an STD. You should visit your doctor or nearest Planned Parenthood clinic to be tested. So, like the old saying, there were just two ships passing in the night. It was a secluded rendezvous across the avenue. Cocktails for two. Yep. Uh, all right, listen, people. People. Have a, have, a good, have a good weekend and week. Safe, of course. Have a safe one. Right. Oh, boy, oh, boy. When, when, once I, once I, uh, I get really good, um, 
at the, my divining rods. You will see more of them on my new series called Progressive Discussions After Dark. And uh, I've been doing the show so far with uh, my friend and co-host Mick Von Raven. Um, and uh, it's done at night, of course, after dark. And it's done uh, in a totally different um, surrounding than what we have here. Completely different. So it's dark, it's macabre, it's gothic looking. And, uh, you know, it's after dark. What do you want from me? Anyway, we'll see it. Oh. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> I might as well give greetings to Mick Von Raven. Hello there, Mick Von Raven. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I salute you. All right, we'll see you. Don't worry. This is it. This is it. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.